We've been talking in this last series that we've been having, we've been talking about um, our big behind, right? About our big spiritual behind. And, and just um, how all of us, and not just some of us, but all of us have a behind, don't we? Every single one of us do, right? And how that God, God's prayer, right? Paul said this for us, is that we don't fall behind. He, God doesn't want us to fall behind in any of our spiritual gifts. Anything that God has for you, you're never the behind. You're always the head. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? Always the head. And that's how God sees you. God sees you as, and we are, reflections of Himself. Why do you think the devil hates you so bad? Why do you think the devil hates you so bad? Every time he sees you, you remind him of God. Right? Amen. And every time we don't forgive, we remind the devil of himself. Now we can say, oh my. Oh me or oh my or amen. Right? We can say that. We can say amen. Because God forgave the whole entire world. We've been talking about this, how, how God sees forgiveness and how the church don't. Do you know that there's people, people who claim to be Christian, who claim to be born again, set free, bought by the blood, and hates his brother? Amen. Hates his Christian brother. Even hates his enemies. We're not supposed to hate our enemy. We love them. Right? We love them. And in the loving, we just get a heap of coal of fire on their head. You know? That's a twofer. Right? That's a twofer. But the purpose is to save the soul. Right? To save the soul. But there's Christians that hate. That's a behind. There's the Christians that won't forgive. That's a behind. Right? And this is where we've been, we've been talking about. We've been talking about um, this man in Matthew 18 that he owed this guy almost four billion dollars. If it was silver, if it was gold, I mean, it could have been twenty billion dollars, right? But it was at least four billion dollars, and he forgave the debt. He just forgave the debt. How'd you like to eat that? How'd you like to eat that one? But he did. And then the guy goes out and sees a guy that owes him a couple thousand, and he grabs him by the neck and shakes him and throws him in prison till he paid back everything. And, and the master heard that and said, You wicked servant, because you didn't forgive like I forgave you. I'm going to deliver you to the tormentors. But not just as him, his wife, his kids, everything he had. All goes in. Do you know that when we don't forgive, it affects our families? Think about that, church. Come on. When we don't forgive, it affects our families. So God is saying, forgive, forgive. I forgave you. You need to forgive others. And this is where we left off last week. We left off in Romans. This is where we're going to pick back up again today. Because we as believers, church, have to disqualify ourselves as a judge. We have to disqualify ourselves as a judge. Right? Now the Bible tells us that we got to judge righteous judgment. All right? Now what that really means is we, we got to know right from wrong. Right? God gave us a spirit of discernment. You know what that means? It doesn't mean what's knowing right from wrong, but it's knowing what's right from what's almost right. What's almost right. It's the almost that'll get us in trouble, right? Yeah. Right? So we, we got to be careful. we got to be careful. So we want to purge ourselves of these things because we want to be, don't we all want to be an instrument that Christ can use? We want to be that. But sometimes we don't want to pay the price of that. That i got to forgive people that hurt me in the past. Because if I forgive them, then in my selfishness, I think, well, that means he got away with it. 
or she got away with it, or they got away with hurting me, they got away with all that, and that ain't fair. Yeah, I know it's not fair. It also ain't fair that Christ came down and died because of me. Not because all of anybody else, but because of me. My sins nailed in there. My sins did. So I'm guilty. I, I got to understand that I'm guilty too. And I got to understand that God loves those people just as much as he loves me. Right? But sometimes that's hard to operate in, especially when I'm Still hurting. That sting of whatever hurt me. Whatever he did, she did, mom, dad, Uncle Creepy, whatever, right? Whatever they did to us sometimes affects my whole life. Ooh, and it's hard to let go sometimes, right? But as long as I hold on to those hurts, right? As long as I hold on to them, I'm still in this torment of what they did. So, by grabbing him by the neck like that man did, and shaking him, saying, pay me, pay me. I want recompense for what you owe me. For what you owe me. When I let go, it doesn't mean that he's not guilty. It just means that I'm set free, Amen. right? I'm set free. I'm not struggling no more. I'm free, right? And I allow God to judge that man, Amen. right? Now, there's more that I can do. There's more that I can do. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 says this. Recompense means payback. <laughs> to no man, evil for evil. Right? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That's what the scripture tells us. Recompense to no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Avenge not yourself. So that tells me I, 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 can't, I can't be the judge of all mankind. Even when they did me wrong, I can't be the judge of that. Even though I'm still feeling the sting and the pain of everything they did, I cannot be their judge. I cannot be. Because regardless of what they did to me, I'm still a sinner, ain't I? And I know that sometimes in my life I've hurt other people. I've hurt other people. I have. I have. Sometimes I hurt people, and it doesn't even have to be physical, right? All I have to do is hate them. Anybody ever hate somebody? Watch the news. Look at the Palestinians, right? Killing children, killing pregnant women, and cutting the babies right out of their wombs while they're alive. While they're alive. It's so easy to hate those people. It's so easy to hate. But it takes the Spirit of God inside of me to realize that God still loves those people. Can you believe that? God still loves those people. Those people are still made in likeness and image of God, just like you were. And it's very difficult to do. So when it says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. I mean, sometimes we got to hunt. And we got to hunker down to find some place in here that I can try to love my enemies the way God loves them. We do it, and we do it, and we do it, and we do it until God breaks. And God brings judgment, but it should never be me, right? It should never be me. Does that make sense? Amen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, 
Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Give place to wrath. Therefore, if thine enemy hungers, feed him. You kidding me? I got to feed my enemies now? And if he thirsts, give him a drink. You kidding me? For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. All right. Sounds good now. <laughs> Sounds good now, doesn't it? And now we're getting back. But that should not be our heart. That should not be our heart. My heart should be God's heart. Right? That I give to them. Because God has compassion on them. We talked, I don't know if that was here that I mentioned the power of God. I think it was when we were talking about the word bear sheet. That even in, inside of the name of God is the name fire. Right? Power. Power. Devouring teeth. Right? And I may, gave the, the example of the burning bush. It's on fire. It's hot. It's not being consumed. Why isn't it being consumed? Because God is merciful. He also is, He may be all powerful, but He's also merciful. And that's where we got to learn these, these characters of God. So when the scripture tells us here to give place to wrath, therefore, if thine enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, uh, give him drink, for in doing so thou shalt keep whole, uh, coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. The Bible says vengeance is mine. Look at, look at verse 19. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Now it's in, Deuter in the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, that's another story. But I want you to go to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. And I, I want you to see the big picture here. It is hard, it is hard of a leader of anything. I don't care if you're a foreman at work, if you're a pastor in a church, if you're God Almighty to keep peace among men. You think about that. It is difficult. James and John comes up to Jesus and said, Hey, guess what? Will you, will you make a, a well, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Then they have Mama come up. Mama comes up and says, Hey, will you make my sons great? Will you make my sons great? What do you think the other ten were thinking? Buddy, I do as much as you do around here. What, what, what makes you think you're greater than me? What, what makes you think? And uh, so there's all these contentions among the twelve apostles, the twelve apostles, when Christ is in their midst. Why? Because the devil is a deceiver. Right? We have to understand that the body, we got to think of this, the body of Christ is one body. One body. One body. We're not different. We're all part of one body. And when one body hurts, everybody hurts. Stub your toe in the morning one time, right? The whole body's throbbing. How did I know that my heart was in my toe? Because it's boom, 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 right? I didn't know it lived down there. I thought it was somewhere up here, but it's not. It's down in my toe, right? The whole body hurts because I stubbed my toe. Isn't that, isn't that something? So when we, the body of Christ here, come up here and one person has a need, we all run to the need, don't we? We all run to the need. And it's easy sometimes to put money in the plate because there's a need in the body. What if the need in the body is forgiveness? Now, sometimes that's harder, right? Because that affects the heart. And you know why sometimes it's hard to forgive from the heart? 
The answer is because my heart ain't always right, Jim. Amen. My heart ain't always right. Yep. So I got to go back to the scripture. We talked about this in Sunday school. In Sunday school, so you guys, a lot of you all weren't here. And we we're talking about the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Moses comes down uh, the first time, and he's got these two great big tablets of stone, right? The rabbis teach, and Scripture even tells us, that when God walks on the earth, that the earth, his footsteps turn to sapphire. Isn't that amazing? And what science teaches us, that intense heat, that when God walks, the earth itself turns to sapphire, like the jewel, a sapphire. And what science teaches that that intense heat, intense heat in rock that contains this aluminum oxide can turn rock to sapphire. Isn't that amazing? So we got this precious jewel out of something that was just rock, right? It was just a rock a second ago. So if God took his finger and with his finger wrote the Ten Commandments, right? then the Ten Commandments would have turned to sapphire. Isn't that amazing? What a beautiful picture. That the Word is a precious jewel. Wow. So the word sapphire, sapphire is actually a French word that comes from a Latin word, that comes from a Greek word, which comes from a Hebrew word, sapphire. S-A-P-P-R-I, right? And that word means to speak, to speak, to announce, to proclaim. So we got God's word, which is the jewel that can save us, and we are supposed to proclaim it. I'm supposed to, every time I come and I give the word of God to somebody, I'm giving them precious jewels that are able to save their souls. Isn't that amazing? That's what the Word of God is to us, right? And sometimes I need that applied here so that I'm able to forgive like God forgives. I need that Word. I need the spoken Word, that living Word. Didn't God say? Scripture tells us. I wrote it once on stone. Next time I'm going to write it on the heart of every man. So now my heart becomes the jewel of God. Think about that. Your heart becomes the jewel of God from which his word will be spoken. Isn't that awesome? So <clears throat> when we look at this from the standpoint of the body, right? And the body needs work, right? The body needs work. Anybody have a body that needs work? Right? We all do. We all do. And when we get to Ephesians chapter 4, he's going to start talking a little bit about this. Right? I want you to see this under the guise of forgiveness. Right? We're going to go briefly through this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says, I... Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. If you're a Christian, then you better walk like a Christian. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yep, yep. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Now that's tough. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in a bond of peace. There is one body. There you go. There is one body. So we're all one family. We're all part of the body of Christ. Do you really think Christ wants his toe throbbing? No! He doesn't want to stub his toe. And sometimes I'm the toe that's throbbing because I'm not acting like the jewel God made me to be. Hmm, isn't that something? Sometimes I'm not acting like the jewel. That sapphire ring that God has made me to be. Hmm. Because I don't operate with the same love that God operates in. Right? He just said it. 
It just said it. Forbearing one another in love. So when we get over here to verse 11, and it says that God gave some apostles, and He gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And this is why I said earlier that God believes that you're worthy of perfection. He believes in you so much. He thinks, believes that you are worthy of perfection. God sees you as a jewel, a priceless jewel. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're so worthy. Don't ever let the devil tell you you're not. And you know why? Because God's word abides in you. And God's word Amen. is what makes you worthy. Amen? Amen? God's word. God's word. Amen or oh me, right? You're allowed to shout in here, church. You're allowed to shout, all right? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith. Till we all come. Because, see, we ain't all on the same level, are we? Nope. So we all got to come together. We all got to fit. But God always wants to raise the bar on us. Because a lot of us still operate under the bar, the standard of the old man. Oh me, amen or oh me. And you know, that's the oh me part, right? That's the oh me part. Where God wants us to operate after the new man, the new man who's born after the spirit of the living God, right? With the Holy Spirit living through you and radiating through you and those precious sapphires that dwell inside of you are reaching out to everyone else. That's what God wants, the perfecting of the saints, right? So this is the unity, right? To the unity of the Son of God unto a perfect man. That's what God wants for you. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Right? Amen. Tossed to and fro. James says a double-minded man is a guy that's tossed to and fro. And I'm putting that in layman's terms. Right? Like a ship on the sea, tossed to and fro, back and forward, back. Don't think that man, he'll ever receive anything of the Lord. Right? You know why? Because he's got one foot in the church, one foot in the world, and I'm standing here trying to bridge the gap between good and bad. And I shouldn't have anything to do with the bad, right? Amen. If God lives inside me. How many of y'all know that unforgiveness is not of God? Amen. Unforgiveness. Forgiveness is of God. God wants to forgive. God wants to have us set free. God doesn't want us tormented with our past. None of us were designed for, for torment. None of us was designed to be tortured. Y'all been created to love. Come on. Y'all been created to praise. You all been created for something greater than what the devil has done to God's creation. God's got a better plan, right? So God's going to do the perfecting. He gave us His Spirit, and He's going to start perfecting me from the inside out. So those jewels that are hidden in here can come from the inside. Out. Right? Amen. Out. Amen. Right? Okay. So we be not uh, henceforth any more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, by cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fits jointly together. Right? Christ is the head. That's the control center of everything that I do. Right? The whole body fit joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplies. Now we're talking about you. Every joint, every part of your body is designed with a purpose. 
right? That little toe, that big toe, those ugly parts, the armpits, the bad parts, the good parts, the parts that are good to behold and those that are not. Who would ever want to be a belly button, right? <laughs> Who would ever want to be a lint trap, right? That's all a belly button's good for, right? But we all have one and we all need one, right? Without the belly button, without that umbilical cord, ain't none of us ever be here. It's important. So it's important for me to care for it. Every joint, right? It supplies something to the body. Every one of you are critically important to the body of Christ. Amen. Right? Every single one of us. According to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase that means to grow of the body unto the edifying itself in love. Now, I want you to see this. Because there's a part of me that still lives in Egypt. Come on. There's parts of every one of us that still live in the bondage I came out of. That's called the old man, right? The Bible tells us if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things come new. But sometimes I go back to Egypt because I like to visit there. Right? Amen. When I shouldn't. Exactly. Right? But sometimes I get short-tempered. Yep. Oh, me. Right. Sometimes I stub my toe. Right? And mm, my sanctifier don't work as fast as the things coming out of it. Right? Sometimes my sanctifier doesn't work so good, right? So there's parts of me <laughs> that needs the increase, that needs the part of the maturing, that perfect man that God is trying to make of me. So I got to learn that Egypt is not the place to go. The old man is not the place where I'm going to grow, right? Right? I gotta stay. Pastor Larry always said, stay under the spout where the glory comes out. Right? Stay under the spout where the glory comes out. And sometimes that's what we gotta do. Right? We gotta stay there. Right? Thus I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Oh! Remember what we read about so far? Do you remember? We were in Matthew chapter 3, or excuse me, 18 verse 3. And it tells us that I had to be, conf uh, I had to be changed. I had to be twisted. I had to turn about. Right? I had to become like this little child who's... Willing to forgive, willing to let go, and ain't gonna hold no grudges. I gotta become like that. So that means I gotta do about face because God knows I do. God knows I'll hold a grudge. God knows I'll hate. God knows I'll. And you know, how many of y'all know when you hate somebody, you kill them? You're, you're, you're a killer, right? Because when I hate, I can never love that person to a place that they'll come to repentance, right? I can't, I can't, so I can't hate, right? So this old man of me has got to change. This old man of me, right? So we, were, we was there, and then we went to Romans 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye. Thank you transformed. I got to change, right? That's the metamorphos, metamorphos. That's the Greek word for transformed, right? That means a little caterpillar goes into this ball, turns into a little woolly thing in the bush somewhere, and then a butterfly pops out. I changed. I changed. I don't hate like I used to hate. I don't hold grudges like I used to hold. I can forgive because I realize that God has forgiven me. So there's a part of my mind where the vanity still lives, right? 
then I think, oh, I hope that guy stubs his toe in the morning. Oh, I hope that guy does it. Oh, and we just wish vengeance upon them. That's not the heart of God, is it? That's not speaking from the sapphire fountain where God's word dwells. Right? It's not there. So that's the vanity of my mind where I got to change. Right? So this is what Paul's talking about here to this Ephesian church. You know what the church, first church mentioned in the book of Revelation is? It's the church of Ephesus. You remember what their problem was? They lost their first love. They lost their first love. Isn't that amazing? When we don't forgive, when we don't love like God loves, not only do we lose our love for each other, friend to friend, person to person, we lose our love of God. Isn't that something? So this is what Paul's talking about this. Thus I say then and testify in the Lord that you walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understand darkened and being alienated from the life of God. Did you all read that? Having the understanding darkened and being an alien, you're foreign from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Because, like we talked about before, if I stand before the throne of God and I ask Him every day, God, forgive me. Forgive me for what I did. Oh, Lord, I stubbed my toe. I said some bad words. Oh, I did this. I took two cookies out of the cookie jar yesterday. Oh, Lord, I did this. I did that. And then I confess all my sins. If I don't forgive my brother, God's not going to forgive me either. And I still stand before God guilty because I did not forgive my brothers. And I'm still in the vanity of the Gentiles because I think I'm good and I don't think my brothers are. Right? Right? That I think that I'm a good guy. Well, look at what I do. Look at what I do. I do this, I do that, and, 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 and look what, what, Jimmy don't do what I do, so I must be a better guy than he is. Right? Right? And, well, look, look what Chad does. I, I, I do more things than Chad does. So I must look at, look at Brad. Oh, so I must be better than all these guys. How did we start this chapter? That we walk in lowliness and meekness, preferring one another in love. Right? So I got to remember that I was an abomination one day too. That I was dying in my own sins. And God forgave me the four billion dollars I owed him. The four billion sins that I committed against him. Amen. And I got to go forgive my brothers too. Amen? Amen. If I don't want to be alienated. I don't want to be an alien to God. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be one of those illegals. Right? Don't want to be an illegal in God's house, right? Don't want to be them. Who in the past feelings have given themselves over to lavishness, that literally means to filthy works, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. And it is so that you have heard of Him and been taught by Him as the truth that is in Jesus. Put off, put ye off that uh, concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Put off the corruptness of the old man. It's the old man that wants to hold grudges. It's the old man that wants to hold on to the things that in retrospect are hurting me because I'm so afraid that if Jimmy offends me, I'm so afraid that if I forgive him, then he walks away scot-free. And here I am, the victim, all over again. 
That's stinking thinking, isn't it? That's stinking thinking. That's just what that is. That is all that is. That's the old man saying, gosh, I really hope he stubs his toe in the morning. Gosh, I really hope he gets hurt somehow. Gosh, I re-, because now we're even. That's justice. That's justice. That's not grace. Right? You want to know what grace is? The guy, you came home from work one day and you walked through the door and there's all your family members and they've all been murdered. They've, they've been shot and stabbed and cut to pieces. And you look at the door, there's the guy and he runs out and he runs out the back door and you grab the gun on the way out that's in the cabinet and you walk up there and you boom, boom, boom and you shoot him and kill him. That's justice. That's an eye for an eye. And a tooth for a tooth. He killed your family. You killed him back. Right? Let's say you come home again. And there you find your family. The next scenario. And they're all dead too. They've been shot. They've been killed. And you see this guy run out the back door. So instead of grabbing a gun, you grab the phone and you call 911 and says, there he is, he's hopping to his car, there he is. And the cops come flying around and they catch the guy and they arrest the guy. He goes to court, he's convicted, and he spends the rest of his life in prison or goes to, um, and, or he goes to the death chamber. Well, that's justice, isn't it? That's our justice system. But you know what grace is? Grace is you come home. And you see this, your family members are all dead, your wife, your children, everyone that you love, they're all been killed by this guy. And you look at him and there he is. And you run him down and you catch him. And he falls on his knees and he says, oh, would you forgive me? Forgive me what I did. I'm so sorry. I, I came in your host house and I was just hungry. Your wife screamed. I didn't know what to do. So I, I panicked and I killed them all. But come home with me. I'll make sure you're fed. Come in. I'll make sure you're fed. And you sit him down at your table, and you make a meal, and you feed him. That's grace to its extreme. You know, every time we hate, we kill somebody. And God forgave every one of you those murders. Every time that we looked at a woman in lust, we violated her, and he's forgiven us. Every time we lusted for a, a man, woman, whoever you are, we violated that person in our mind, and God's forgiven every one of you that. And not only that, but he invites us to a table to sit down and eat with him. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's amazing, Grace. That's amazing, Grace, how sweet the sound. Right? That's amazing, Grace. And it's hard for us in our human mind to, to consider that. Because be honest with you, if I walked through the door and found that, I'd be grabbing the gun. I'd be grabbing the gun, right? Or I'd be grabbing the phone. But I wouldn't be making him dinner. Do you see how much I got to change? How much all of us got to change? How much all of us got to change? Forgiveness is something that, 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 that is rooted in us so hard. That, that we can't imagine the, the vilest things that would be done to us. But yet, we, we've committed every one of them. We've committed every one of them. And God has taken away of that. And He's taken away the sting of death for us. In so much that He'd rather have nails ran through His hands than to sit in heaven without you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, when we think like that and we see the heart of God, it shows us how much, how much of this needs to be changed in the sapphire yet. Right? It shows us just how much. We're, we're going to continue this just a little bit because th this is, I, I, I hope this is interesting to you. I hope this is meaningful to you, this, this series here that, that we've been teaching on because it is so prevalent in, in every one of our lives. It is so prevalent. And, and it's something that we got to um, be able to free ourselves from. Amen? 
We got to be able to say, God, I, God, I, I'm not as judge. You judge this man. God, I, I give it all to you. You're the judge. You take care of this situation, Lord. And I just back away. I just back away. Oh, Lord, what mom and dad, what Uncle Creepy, what Aunt Creepy, what all these people did to me. Lord God, I, I, I give it to you. You judge, Lord God. I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm not their judge no more. Lord God, whatever, whatever the case may be, right? I surrender all. I surrender all. <laughs> it's hard to do. I surrender all. Amen? Everybody get something here today. Everybody get fed. We're going we're gonna to continue with this. I didn't leave on a very happy note, right? I did not. But sometimes forgiveness is hard. But yet we still got to do it, right? Sometimes it is. And when I realize that God forgave me, it makes it a whole lot easier to forgive others. Amen? For those that are out there in TV land, right, brother? We're at 1604 East Main Street in Ottawa, Ohio. Come be with us Thursday nights, start at 6 o'clock, 10.30 on Sunday mornings, 9.30 if you're really energetic and want to go to Sunday school, right? It's worth it. It's, amen, brother, amen. Uh, Bill, what did you tell? Uh, Oh, yep. If you got a prayer request out there, send us an email. We're at Facebook, right on Facebook. We will put you on our prayer list. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I just pray, Father God, for every person here. (laughs) Lord God, that you touch the heart of every one of us, Lord God. That you write your laws on our hearts and you write your love upon us, Lord God. I pray, Father God, for the sapphire of our hearts, Lord God. Lord God, that it reaches every single soul. I pray for those that are struggling with unforgiveness and bitterness, Lord God, that they'll be able to take it to the river Mara, Lord God, and be able to put the wood in, Lord God, to put the cross in, the bitterness, Lord God, so that the bitterness turns sweet all over again. Lord God, lead us by your Spirit this week as we depart from this place. Let us never depart from your presence, Lord God. Make everyone an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Give them victory over every situation, over everywhere they go. Father God, we will not forget to give you the praise and the glory. Let's do your wonderful, glorious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.